Morning Campus. I think I could listen to that track all day. I really like it when other people sort of have their music or playlists. I'm like, oh, I'm having that. That's great. Mm. Um, good morning, Vietnam. Um, how are we all? Lovely Friday morning. Uh, and today we are joined for our Pathmakers webinar by the phenomenal dancer, contemporary dancer, choreographer and teacher. Yeah, got the skills to pay the bills. Sarah Bateman. Um, and on that, I am going to pass over to that lovely lady and I will um, spotlight you. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, like Jimmy said, I'm a, a dance artist. I started my training in Wellington at a place called Chaos Dance. Um, I did mainly ballet and then I went on to um, do three years at London Contemporary Dance School. And then I was in a company in Switzerland for a year. Um, yeah. Called Theatre Saint Gallen, and now I'm back in Warrington, and I am um, wanting to be, uh, yeah, wanting to do more dance around Warrington and get more Warrington dance out there in the like for the public and stuff. So yeah. So, um, how did I get into the industry? Um, I was a naughty two year old, um, and basically, um, I was a bit of a madam, and um, yeah. My grandma said to my mum, right, get her into more. She was like a dance teacher at the time. And so my mum taught me and got a bit disciplined. So also my mum just wanted to take me because I'm a little girl. She wanted to get me to dance. Um, yeah. Um, what challenges did I face? Um, I've got quite a few. So um, confidence. Um, I'm a confident person, but um, it was more confidence in myself and my ability. Um, I was just, yeah always put myself down um, also like that came with like physical image as well with being a dancer you know you have to look a certain way this is your product this is what you're selling and so there's stuff around that being confident with how you look um, also knowing I was a bit different um, whether it was in school or again like with dancing I just um, knew something I always feel a bit, a bit strange and it was kind of like sometimes choreographically like I'd be in a rehearsal and thinking about I'll do like this and I'll do like that and it'd be like or if I did something a bit different people would question it and it would be that would be challenging to me because it's like well what's what's wrong with with this idea or whatever the only moment I sort of um didn't feel I felt more normal was when I went to LCDS and it was kind of like there was loads of people that were like spewing out ideas and had their own little quirks and it was like okay now I feel like I met my people now <laughs> like I get it um also, like, even now I feel quite, like, more secure. I know what I want to do. Um, so, yeah, knowing, knowing that something, something was a bit different, um, that's an accepted thing. It's OK. It's a bit different. Um, COVID and Brexit, that's a massive challenge. Doing dance classes in your kitchen every morning, doing plies, bar stuff, um, not having much room to move, not having a big studio. I missed having a big space to just explode everywhere um also i went to berlin a couple of times well i went twice and had to come back twice because of covid and lockdown um because i went because berlin's got a big art scene so i went over well big dancing so they were there to try and get work and then just basically I spent my whole time in the apartment so i thought what am i doing here so i just had to come back um auditions i hate auditions um just because before I went in, rather than being myself, I always thought, oh, what do they want? And try to like be be something I wasn't. And I'm just like, I'd, I just, I didn't like the whole process, you know, like you could, um, I remember one audition, like I did a lot of like of cruise auditions and then I went into the room and then um, the only people they talk were blonde girls with, like honestly, all oh, they were still blonde. And then at the end of the audition, um, this slag came up to me, she went, you actually absolutely nailed that. I said, I don't understand how you got in, but then we went, I went, well, look who they took. It was just the old wanted just blonde people. <laughs> so it's like, uh, but it was just like, whatever, okay. Um, and I hate doing show reels. Like that's a challenge because I don't like um, being in my head, just embarrassing. <laughs> that was always a challenge. Um, Oh, one, another big challenge for me was, um, so I'd come back from Switzerland um, and I finished off my, my MA, my master's. And I was, while I was doing that, I was just doing some part-time work at Friars for a bit in the bar. 
Um, and then after doing my MA, I was like, right, I need more of a full-time job to like pay for auditions and stuff. So I got a job at Starbucks at the Village Hotel. And um, I remember the first week, I mean, the first day I put on my kit and like, I remember just being like, just come like in tears, like how, how like, what am I doing this? <laughs> what am I doing? So after being sat in a theatre, like, well, being in a change room, I've had my hair done, like you get all your costumes fitted, everyone running around after you, people dressing you and all this. And now I'm having to, like, now I'm serving people. Like, it's just kind of like, well, that's just normal life. I've got to crack on, I've got to do it. And the first two weeks, honestly, I would come home and I'd cry. Um, but it turned out to be a really good year um, in the thick of it. Like I, I, and I met some, like, some of my best mates are from the village from Starbucks. And uh, so I met my boyfriend as well. So I'm glad I did it now. <laughs> and it also helped me understand public's audience perspective, like from a norm, like a normal person point of view, not a dancer. Um, my last challenge was, um, so I was friends with the, drummer from Viola Beach um, and I was studying at the time and I remember like when it all happened and um, I had to just get out of bed and try and get into the class every day and I just thought I can't, that wouldn't want me to like um, sit in bed all day not do it it's just go on do what you love doing and just, that's what kept me going in and I had this project as well that I had to like an assignment that was performance and I'm like how am I going to do this like I just my head's like just not there um, but that push to get through it was a uh, was a big challenge but I got through it and it's all fine now um anyway career highlights um oh having my first performance in a professional theatre um it was a, it was an opportunity done by the place and I got to work with a composer who he made his own music and he um he had put his music on like we had live uh, musicians on stage and my uh, i carried back and we collaborated and it was just like i delivered it on the day i was so nervous but i was like oh i want to do this every day like i just i absolutely loved it um also did a piece in a church my negotiate like my negotiated project was like the final dissertation of the year it was like a, um i created a piece in the church I wanted to create a, a spiritual sort of piece religious sort of piece but um for a secular audience and how I was going to do that and I had a good turnout and do what went ticket to boost so that was a big highlight for me um performing in Switzerland at 30 St Gallen um it was kind of we literally had some ovations like every single performance um it was just a beautiful um country to live in um and it was that moment when I first got on stage in the first call, I was like, oh yeah, I've done it. That's cool. And I, that was a good moment. Um, working with, oh yeah, and travel. Travel with the job is amazing. Um, working with a lady called Liz Agis, who's in physical, well, like physical theatre. She's absolute legend. Um, lock her up, she's brilliant. Um, Working with one of my idols, his name's Dane Hurst. I used to go to the Lowry to watch a lot of shows. And he, it was Ron Bear, I used to like watching, and he was, I remember seeing him like, I love Dane Hurst. Oh wow, he's amazing. Then there was one project we had at, um, at the place, the places else, uh, the London Contemporary Dance School. And uh, so at the place, and then the teacher's like, okay, so uh, this uh, terms project, we're working with X, this colleague for this person, this person, and Dane Hurst. And I was like, oh. I'm gonna work with them please so i worked with them and it was love that that was a good moment um not really a career highlight but um, i remember seeing this dance called um sylvie gm who's like a big um icon in the dance world i just saw her as a saddle as well i turned around and there she was i was like oh i've never been starstruck but that was the first time um i did a chiquetti ballet dvd at the royal ballet school well, uh, were the Royal Ballet Studios, that was cool. Um, and also, if anyone's watched Billy Elliot, the swan at the end, with him, Adam Cooper, real sound guy, dead normal, lovely. Um, and that's it for career highlights. Um, career advice to 16 year old self, chill out. <laughs> chill out <laughs> just calm down i just used to beat myself up about everything um 
I didn't enjoy normal stuff. I would like, I wouldn't watch films, wouldn't watch telly. I wouldn't go out and do normal stuff. Everything was just dance, 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 dance. And I just, you know, Sarah, everything's gonna be fine. Just calm down. So that's my advice from there. Um, people who have helped me out, um, my family. I wouldn't be where I am without them, like at all. Um, my dad's my rock. Um, he's, um, I mean, he's very passionate about his job. He's into football. Look, he's got all his shirts at the back there. Da, da, da. He jobs. He works for the FA, so he he works with some like high end people. So like when I'm um, trying to communicate stuff or trying to do emails and like how do I go about this situation? How do I do that? He just says, you know, he just has the right thing to say. He just said, do it like this, do it like that. So yeah, he just keeps me absolutely grounded in it. Um, my mum, she's the creative one. Um, she's absolutely off her, like she's absolutely bonkers. Um, but she's, she's, they are my inspiration. My parents are my inspiration, 100%. Um, my mum used to run around after me everywhere. You know, this, this dance stuff. Oh, I forgot my leotard, mum. Oh, I forgot this costume. There, back comes, wait, this is Sarah. Why you left it? Why you left it? It's just, it's just kind of like, well, Sorry, mum, <laughs> she's but she, she does it anyway. So, absolute legend. Um, my grandparents as well. And they'd run to the ends of the, like, the world for you. Like, um, if you had a cold, they'd be there in seconds, you know. Um, and they came to every single performance, you know, even at school, just like to every single assembly. I've got a, this thing called a golden apple, they'd be there straight there. Um, they even made me a rock when I made like a choreography about a mermaid. Um, out of a plant pot and paper mache so they did that for me beautiful rock um it was it's a very good rock <laughs> um but yeah they're really good and then even the rest of the family so my nana and my, my um auntie uncle aunties and uncle um cousins and stuff like they always like be funding and stuff and let me know what's going on notifications about stuff so big support network absolutely love them um in terms of like dance people um first gonna say is Kate Simmons um yeah she was my first dance teacher she's based in Warrington Wollstone excellent lady um she everyone will say like oh Kate's Kate you know how she works um but absolute legend so professional um yeah wow what woman so she's absolutely yeah she's bonkers but She's amazing. So if you want your kids to be a professional dancer, send them to Kate, because <laughs> she's a legend. Um, um, the faculty at the place at London Contemporary Dance School, all of them, fantastic people. Um, Veronica was the principal at the time, legend. Um, Jeannie Steele, Raymond Chai. Um, the people that looked after us, the librarian, Tiffany was a legend. Antigone, he was like the um if you had anything wrong, a lot of problems, you go to see Tiggs, she'll sort you out. Um and like Kim, who was like the physio, um, uh, but she's also like the therapist as well. Like she helped me through a lot, um, especially when the VB uh that's passed away. She was always she let me just come in, she used to buy me brews and biscuits and stuff. So um the faculty there is just it's just a beautiful school and um, really supportive um, and also my friends from there that I made um, they were so supportive I mean we were, we were all just like a big family and it was just um, yeah I'm a, yeah the people at the place um, um, Liz Agus again I'm going to bring her up because um, obviously I, I started off in Bali so my perceptions of dance and others um types of dance it was always kind of like well if you can't do ballet then you can't do anything um and then I ended up in the contemporary school because I just thought I need a change I need to be in London um and I remember there was a show on from Liz Agus and my friend my house I'd go out it's right up your street so you'll love it anyway I go and watch it it was just the most bonkers that it was brilliant like it was amazing and I come out and went I don't know why, but I really like that. <laughs> and then I ended up working with her um, in my final year and it was one of the 
best pieces I ever did. Like I just, she was right up my street, loved it. And she got me, to, I did some text in the style of John Cooper Clark and um, yeah, so that was really cool. Um, also, yeah, and just all my friends um, that helped me out along the way, and especially my friend Claire and Frankie, they were, um, they really helped me out. Um, yeah, so what are we on now? Okay. Mm. So, yeah, friends and family. Um, anyway, advice to those wanting to go into my career. Um, be bold, be brave, and do everything in kindness. Um, there's a quote from Cind Cinderella Live, actually Cinderella, I absolutely love this. Because I, I struggle, struggle um, with, my mum says, come on, Sarah, put yourself out there, be a bit more thingy. And um, I said, but I don't want to be arrogant. I don't, I'm not that type of person. And then um, I remember watching Cinderella and they said, be bold, be kind, and always believe in a little magic. And I thought, do you know what? I can I can do that. Rather than being arrogant, be just be bold and courageous. And yeah. Um, also, um, really um, love the people that you're working with and that you're surrounded by. Um, you know, we're all artists, we're all human beings. Um, we've all got skills, we're all skilled in different areas. Um, even if you, it's just dance, everyone's got their, their quirks and you help each other out. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's just, it just creates a nicer environment to work in when, when you do things with, in love. Um, yeah. Um, don't mind anybody up. <laughs> it's just, yeah, um, good enough, that, yeah. Um, just don't, just try and do the right thing or, yeah. Um, you never know when you might need someone, so don't don't take the nick out of people. Um, I always um, so with, with me again, it's like I get a bit anxious or a bit nervous when I go into like situations and stuff. And um, I'm a I'm a Christian myself, so I always went on the quote of um, if if I'm going into a difficult situation, it's like what can mortal man do to me? Like what can they actually physically do to me? It's like well they can't really do anything. <laughs> it's just you just go be yourself, and just yeah, um, give what you have to offer. Like they can't touch you really, and if they do say something to you, that you take offence to, they they really can't. It's gonna be fine. Um, but yeah, be yourself always. Um, and you know again we've been, I feel like we've been put on the, the planet for a purpose and um, we've all been given something that we can share and offer is and just know that um, you know you should want to give what you've been given and it's um, it's nice to share those things with other people you know like even with lockdown if you've got a talent and you can perform like I did a street performance in the street with a few friends we went around just to entertain people I mean you've got that talent share that um yeah so but as being a Christian it's like it's your God-given talent just yeah and it's that sort of thing and yeah that's kind of it so yeah be yourself courageous bold kindness that's my thing and be happy thank you. thank you so much sir that was amazing um uh, I mean, as uh, I've got questions, but I'll see if anyone else has got. Um, is anyone got a question? I've got a question. Go ahead. It was about you mentioned before I wrote it down about being what you are when you went to auditions and things, and you're trying to be not you. Um, how did you then start being you, and how's that going? Um, I stopped doing auditions, and I decided I want to choreograph because. I was in auditions. <laughs> um, I feel like if you want to be a dancer, you kind of, if you are a dancer, dancer, like just want to do the dance, then you, you will, you've kind of got that mentality of how to do it. I just wasn't that sort of person. And I was, I was in auditions and I'd be like, do you know what, I'll, how would I do it? And it'd be like, oh, who would I be looking for? And it'd be like, why am I doing this to myself? <laughs> um, um, I know, and well, I know what I like, and I know what I, I just kept redesigning stuff in my head. I just, I, yeah, so being me was doing my own stuff <laughs> because I, I can't, I don't like being told what to do. <laughs> so, um, 
and it'd be like I, I know what I'm looking for a dance if I was looking for a dancer it wouldn't be who can do the best kick or the best turn it's like I go for more like the person someone who's quite humble someone is um a grafter someone who's reliable um you know um that sort of thing is a is committed it's, so yeah so that's really good Sorry, answer. no. Well, it's just interesting that those qualities that you talk about before, and you mentioned something that just uh, that just I picked up on is that you 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 talk about putting yourself forward to be be bold, be brave, and do everything in kindness, and you're saying that your mum was going to push yourself forward, push yourself forward, and you said, "I'm not that kind of person. I'm not arrogant," and I think it's really interesting, and I, I'm in my mission to sort of just make everyone be confident in their own voice. If you're from a background that's been taught, a certain, it tends to be working class background, we we identify as taking our own space and having our own platform for our voice and what we believe in as arrogant. Because if you see people from other, that those people that shout out first, who don't give up, you know, who, who sort of have negative connotations that we go, oh, but yeah. I don't think that, what I'm saying is, I'm trying to reframe it because I don't think that is arrogant. And I don't, to to have your own voice, and I tie that with you saying, for me as an artist, there's an, a, it, you're an artist. You're not just a dancer because you saying oh, actually I want to do that. It's it doesn't matter if you're a musician, a dancer, uh, you know, a, a lyricist, an actor, a theatre maker. Yeah. We're all artists. We all uh, t- you know tell our story or paint our pictures in different forms. And I think that's really interesting because I think and you all you know with those other boundary challenges that you said you faced earlier on, I speak with a lot of, not just speak, with a lot of young students who haven't had those doors open for them or don't believe that they're allowed to do that or they don't know, but actually it's in them somewhere. It's just actually oh, prizing open those, you know, the, the um, almost put, peeling back the covers or, or, or the... Uh, I'm trying to think of it. It's getting that voice out, isn't it? Because you don't know you've got a voice. You don't realise. Then you don't realise you can tell it. Because unless someone shows you, you can do that, then you don't think of it. How many, you know, how many young kids in schools would ever think that they could be a dancer and tour the world? I would imagine not that many. They might think they could be a YouTuber. But, you know, no, I don't think, yeah, because people see YouTubers, but they don't see dancers in particular, if not who look like you and sound like you. I yeah, think that's a big thing. Well, uh, going off that point, um, so when I was working in Friars, I was working with people that were a bit younger than me. And um, they were some of the loveliest people, but they, they were very, t- there was, I remember one lad, um, he was very talented, very artistic, he was really OCD. Um, and, um, but he, uh, he was, he, I mean, at 16 I think he was kicked out of his house and he's never had support and stuff and yeah, he's so creative and I remember at Halloween he decorated all of it but he did it really like really cool and really well I went you know like dude, dude you could be like a set designer or something like that goes oh no not good enough I'm not like this and the thing is with schools and because they're so academic is they set it, I feel like they set kids up to be failures because they're fit in a system and because if they fail at maths, English and science, they failed at life then because they've not made yeah. any these things. And it, it honestly frustrates me because I know this kid is really good at what he could have been something really good in doing like set design or something or something more arty. Yet he's never had the support or encouragement to channel that. And it's, I'm just like, it's a shame. It's a shame. It winds me up. So that just yeah, I get it. Likewise, I think there's there's, uh, but it's the interesting because it's easy to sort of, I mean, there's a system that you know, a systematical thing that, that that actually is broken. The system doesn't work, particularly for either certain kids from certain backgrounds or, like you say, if you don't fit that mold, if you're not academically intelligent, but that doesn't yeah. mean that you are of any less worth. It just means that yeah. you might have other things. But the, I think one of the, the major issues is is that without privilege. Uh, an opportunity that you don't you know a lot of the privilege I mean you, you, you look at this I've said this before you look at these schools around the country that uh, you know that people pay good money for their theatres are some are better than some regional theatres and the teachers that they have and and actually in those places really interesting those cultural um, opportunities acting singing dancing 
are all pushed and held really high. So isn't that funny yeah. that in state schools where there's not the money and there's other pressures that actually that's the first thing to go. Um, so basically you're saying, yeah, culture is a privilege uh, and it's it's not the way. That's why I think there's a real, I've said, there's a, uh, sorry, I'll come to you now, Laura, but there's a scene, there's a whole scene of artistic work that is not currently being made because yeah. working classes aren't getting to tell their story because of a variation of issues. But I'm like, uh, and the only the main one that is told is TV, and you've got Jim because you've got Jimmy McGovern, Shane Meadows is for me they always go to. But where's Shadow Me Shane Meadows of the dance world? Where's Shane Meadows of the theatre world? Where's Shane? Me you know where are those people of the, the that strand of work isn't being made because those people are still in the dark in seedlings, and you need they need love and attention at TLC and confidence and growth but to, in order to actually hear their voice and sort of grow up. Um, yeah. uh, Laura? <clears throat> oh, I'm off mute. Um, hi. Mine was more, you mentioned about um, body image, and mm -hmm. I just wondered in the dance world, obviously we know body image is a massive thing anyway, but how throughout your experience training career have people helped or hindered and how have they helped or hindered you with with thinking about body image kind of because i think i think students like at 16 now who have gone through kate simmons who are wanting to be dancers they'll have this on their brain about having to look a certain way. Yeah. And is it changing as well? Is that changing? Um, I think with body image as well, it can be very like psycho psychological as well. Um, and I, I mean, I had issues when I was younger, uh, but it was, you didn't know you had issues, um, but it, it's more of what's going on in here. Um, mm -hmm. um, but I'm but going through a more ballet as well, you pressure to be a certain to look a certain way, certain shapes, certain lines, and to get these lines and stuff, you have to have a certain look. Um, when I went to contemporary school, that was kind of it wasn't there, and it was just all sorts of body shapes. There's there's no with ballet, it's more like do you know you see models how they want them like this on the catwalk. It's kind of like you you've got to fit this look. Um, like with models who've got long legs and you know like everything's tiny um, but my, my family helped with me um, but it's, if, 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 you, if girls do or even boys go down that route it's obviously it's, um, it is something that you have to do in, it's in your head sort of thing but definitely helped when I went to contemporary school when it was like yo it's just about the dance now this isn't about the way I look um, it's maybe how I present myself but it's not the way my body looks and people are a lot stronger there um people yeah just it's all different and it just made me realize you don't have to be a certain shape to be a dancer you can you can look like what you can be liz agis who's in her six by 50 or 60 i'm not sure and she's still performing and still looking great like mm. rattles off a good performance yeah, so, I think. Yeah, <laughs> if that answers Seb, your question. Yeah, yeah, it did, yeah. Seb, did you have a question? Have you asked your question? No, no, I've asked mine. Thank you, though, Laura. Thanks for checking in. I mean, with, uh, with these, with the playbacks of these, I think quite a lot of young people watch these. And obviously, with you being a dancer and promoting it as a dancer, there are probably quite a lot of young dancers getting out there. And I know you did your advice for you as a 16 year old but now you've had a bit of experience what advice might you give to like young people now um, um it's funny because i meet up with some um students from ks dance just to see how they're getting on and i give them a, i feel like <laughs> the mother and like just giving them advice um God, it depends on the person because everyone's different and they all want to do different things. And I'd say be open-minded because I was closed-minded. I had this idea of being a dancer, you look like this. And actually, 
my whole perspective changed on it from the start of being at the place to the my third year my idea of dance completely changed um so i'd say be open-minded don't close any doors um if you have an opportunity take it um i mean within reason um if it looks really bad then don't take it obviously but um don't s set yourself on one idea of what it is you want to do um because you can be really surprised and surprised for good stuff like with switzerland i, did, I didn't plan that I, that i didn't that was not on my radar i just was just did as many auditions as i could just to try and find work and then that happened so don't close any doors keep them open and do what you feel is right and like your gut instinct as well um yeah and be yourself Brilliant. thank you so much uh, yeah that was really good and really interesting as someone who knows very little about dance and is very <laughs> li you know <laughs> don't talk capable. yourself down jimmy you're a fine dancer uh, do you know what do you, well th there's i know don't get me wrong i look i'm a wardrobe of a man as my brother says he calls me a wardrobe and um but i I mean, I've had to do dance in, in for theatre companies. I've had to do all sorts of dance. But as artists, you just got to say yeah to it. And people have different processes. We did Northern Soul yesterday. Some people picked it up straight away. I would be the last person to get it. But once I do, because I drill things and get it in my head, I will drill it until it's in. And then once it's in, I'll be able to do anything while I'm doing it. Cause it'll just because so everyone's. But at the same time, it's really interesting because we there was a, a um dance tutors or not maybe didn't dance tutors it might be this this lady was a um that i work with when I, in a first professional company she was military-esque i mean like again 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 and i like that i sort of coming from a rugby background i don't mind that but there were times and because you know every if everyone's trying to get it right i was getting it wrong all the time and then i'd get fucking i'd get angry with myself like wanting to punch myself in the legs like come on and you've just got to, I mean, it's very difficult. It's, there is a, a level of discipline, I think, comes with any art form that if you want to reach a certain level, um, I think there is a level of commitment. It's whatever that gets you out of bed or finds it. Or, you know, it's, sometimes it's it's your it's your gym, it's your escape as well. It's like leave your stuff at the door. We work with a lot of students at the moment and the world is a different place at the moment with different challenges um, and different, you know, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a coincidence that mental health issues are going up at the same time social media has sort of grown. I think they're equal and and resilience is a difficult thing. And sometimes it's it's hard to find that to keep going or, you you know, you, anxiety is rife in lots of people. But actually, I think your work or your art is a great place to lose yourself into and, and try and leave you sort of wherever possible. Sometimes it's not, but wherever possible, leave, you know, leave your your what's going on in life at the door and just throw yourself into the work. I think that's uh, thinking of some of the best artists in the world. Look at Amy Winehouse or Bowie or, you know, actually that some of the best stuff comes from, from using that. Uh, yeah, but it's good. And I, I just, I've really enjoyed listening to you, Sarah. And it's, I hope a lot of students and a lot of just people getting to get, yeah, listen to it. And I definitely, it's interesting about body types. I went to see, um, Billy Elliot, the musical, which I gen I've been to see about four times now. And I genuinely just, it, 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 I bawled my eyes. I was one of the best, I bet and laughed my, you know, anything that makes you laugh and cry in equal measure, I think it's brilliant. And I hadn't seen the film, but on the, when you see people, and there were big lads, I mean, heavy set lads doing incredible tap or contemporary stuff. And then there's the bit with the grandmother. And I'm like, that is, I, that's fascinating for me because of people of all these ages, body sizes, body shapes. And that, that's what I mean. I'm like, all of that palette of color that you don't tend to normally see. Like you say, they normally look this. And I'm like, I want that. I want to see an old woman dancing in a social club. Yeah, it's beautiful. It is. It's, more, it's just more real. <laughs> yeah, but it's like you've done that, if anyone hasn't seen it, on, on Sarah's uh, Instagram. Where you got all the um all those blokes doing the the um my dad being one of them. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah, but that's but that's what I, yeah I love it. It's it's sort of I always talk about um making magic out of the mundane, 
And there's something about the everyday, the ev- made the everyday made beautiful. And I loved that. I just, I was like, yeah, anything where you can. And again, it's because I was like, oh, I'd have a crack at that because I go, oh, if they can do it, it's, yeah, it's it's a big thing. If you, go, if you don't see it, if you don't see your stories or hear your voice, how do you know that you're relevant, that your opinion is relevant? I think it's really, or that you could potentially do that. It's such a powerful thing. Um, right. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop this recording and then we can just have a chat. But thank you so much. Big round of applause for Sarah Bateman. Hey, hey, hey. Thank you so much. Woo.